IntelliJ IDEA It's built on the principle that every minute a developer spends in the flow, it's a good minute. And things that break developers out of the flow are bad and should be avoided. In this video, we are going to learn how we can avoid common interruptions in our daily coding. For instance, I hate the time when I have to leave the code editor in order to create a class, an enum or a test unit. We'll recognize that it's more convenient to create them as we type. We'll see how we can avoid going back and fix already typed expression with another IntelliJ feature. First, let's look at postfix completion. This is a great feature because it allows you to keep typing forward instead of going back and retyping things at the beginning. Let's see an example to see what I mean. Here, I want to implement a method which should calculate the sum of all expenses for a person. First, I need to get the user's account and afterwards, I can get all the expenses from the account. To get it, I'll use account repository, then find by name. Imagine that this will get the account from a database. Now, to get a reference of the return account, I'll use the postfix shortcut .var. And because of this, I don't have to go to the start of the line to define this variable. We also get suggestions for our local variable name. Next, for this account object, I have available the method called getExpenses, which should return me all expenses. However, I realize now that I should first check if the account object is not null before calling the getExpenses method. Now, instead of going back and defining an if statement, I can simply say that null and IntelliJ will do just that. Here, I should probably write the logic for this error case. There are many options to handle such error cases. But here, I'd like to define a custom exception by extending the runtime exception class. However, to do that, I need to go to the project view, create a new package, create a new class, give it a name, and then implement it. These are many steps which will probably break my current flow, that is, getting the user expenses. So instead, I'm just going to write it as if it already existed. Draw new, missing account, And I'll also write a message. Missing account for user. And the user. And now I'll use Alt and Enter to create the class on demand. I'll create a package to hold other exception also on demand under the account package. Here, instead of throwable, I'll extend runtime exception, and finally, I'll call the parent constructor. Quickly back to our method, I can now calculate the sum of expenses. So, accounts, get all expenses, and make this a stream. Additionally, I know that these expenses can be deductible and probably I want to filter those out. And for this, I'll use the filter function. Where expense is deductible. Actually, I should filter those out, thus I need to negate this condition. Now, rather than going to the beginning of the statement, I'll simply use the postfix completion that not and I have the exclamation mark at the beginning. I find this really satisfying. Then, for every expense item, I'll get the amount, and for simplicity, I'll consider that they all have the same currency. And finally, I'll calculate the sum using the reduce function from Java 8. Since I already have the result, I might as well just return it. Again, 
I don't have to go all the way up and add the return statement. I'll write that return and I'm good. I don't even touch the maps. The idea is that there are many situations when you realize later that you need to do something with an expression you have already written. We've seen the negation example on the filter statement or the not null check example. Thus, postfix completion will save you a lot of backward movements. Also, for many people, it's more natural to think in the order of subject and then action which needs to be performed with it. For instance, I might want to display the account name and then do a dot s out at the end and this will wrap my expression in a system.out.print line to output this to the console. Or I can get an optional out of the account. Or a for loop. Actually, to see all the postfix options on a symbol, type a dot and then press the up arrow to browse the completion dropdown. However, only the options that make sense in that context will be displayed. Here, if I want to retrieve an optional out of the sum, I don't have an optional postfix available because the return type of this method is not an optional. Until now, you may have noticed that I have this method within the account service implementation class, which is an implementation of the account service interface. So, if I want to make this new method part of the account service API, I should go to the interface and write the signature of my method there. However, since I already define it here, I'll ask IntelliJ to generate it for me in the interface as well. To do this, I'll put an override annotation on the method and then hit Alt and Enter, pull method to account service interface. And now this method is exposed publicly and ready to be used as an API. Great, what else should I do for this method? Now, since this method is available for use, I should probably implement some tests. But how can I tell IntelliJ IDEA to generate the unit testing boilerplate code for me? At the method level, I hit Alt and Enter and then generate the missing test. IntelliJ also knows that I don't have any tests for this particular method and it offers to create a test just for this one only. Now, we might want to test our method to see if it actually calculates the sum of all expenses. First, we should get the account information. However, as you may remember, we get the account information from the account repository, which in turn queries the database. We don't want to query the database in a unit test. For this reason, we'll mock this call like this. When account repository calls find by name method, then return account. But I don't have an account object yet. Again, I'll ask IntelliJ to create it for me. Initialize this reference with a new object. By the way, I can use smart completion since the only available object I can use for this variable is an account. So, new and then shift command enter and the variable is initialized. Of course, this account object is empty. So, we need to set at least one expense item in this account. Account set expenses, array as list, and I'll set a grocery expense for this example. IntelliJ IDEA inferred that the type of this expense is an item. Again, I'll use smart completion. And now let's set an amount for this expense item. and also give it a title. Now, the account repository returns me this account with this expense in it. Finally, 
we are ready to test our method, which is present in account service class, get user expenses, and let's say test user. Again, I'll use the postfix completion that far to create me a reference, and I call it sum. And I can do now a simple assertion to see if it works. Assert equals, and what do I expect? An expense of 10. is equal to sum. And this seems to work. Of course, you might want to do some extensive tests here, but that's enough for this example. Now, this is great and it works, but now a new request comes from the users. They say they would like to know how much they spend per month and not all time expenses. To accommodate this new request, we can add a new parameter to our method something like a time unit, where I can handle time periods such as days, weeks, months, and so on. Probably, I would want to model this as an enum type. Notice that I add the field right here in the test like it already existed, since it's more convenient. On the other hand, the classic way to do this is to go to the project view, find the package, create a new file, and then give it a name. Here. IntelliJ IDEA inferred that this might be an enum class. I'll create this under the domain package. Now, if I go back, I can finish the declaration and also create the mount enum constant. I still have compilation errors, and that's because getExpense method doesn't yet accept a time period parameter. Let's change this via refactoring. Command and F6, add a new parameter, and give it a default value of month. Great. Let's see if the test still runs. It's running, although it's ignoring the time period parameter. So, to be able to select the expense items from the last month, I should probably set a timestamp on the expenses. In the same fashion, and since it's more convenient, I'll directly write them from here. Grocery, set timestamp, which doesn't exist yet, and as a parameter, I'll give it a new date that gets time. I'll use Alt and Enter to create this method on demand. I'll accept the default, but I call this argument timestamp. Still, I have no timestamp field in this domain class, but as expected, I'll ask IntelliJ to generate it for me create field for parameter and additionally it will also initialize it for me in this setter method of course now we should also modify the implementation to take into consideration the time period but this is not the purpose of this video the things to remember are the postfix completion which is a very powerful feature because it allows you to transform an existing expression and help you to always type forward. In my examples, I was relieved multiple times to go back and fix the statement. Also, we learn to create classes, enums, constructors, methods, test methods, fields, and so on, on demand, while we were typing, without having to leave the code editor. This enables us to stay in the flow, without coding interruptions, and help us to be more productive. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.